In the study of the Bishop's Palace at St. Ogg's, in two armchairs before a roaring fire, sit the Bishop and his Archdeacon. They're enjoying their tea, particularly the Archdeacon. Ah, another cup of tea, Henry. Oh, thank you, Bishop. Oh, this is very pleasant. It certainly is. Yep. What do we have now? Is that a Swiss roll? Yes, cream and chopped walnut. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> Won't you have another piece of bread and butter first? It'll only go stale. Oh, all right, if you say so. Waste not, want not. Here you are, Henry. Oh, thank you, Bishop. Uh, on second thoughts... What's the matter? Uh, well, Newt. I remembered Newt. We'll leave the bread and butter for him. I'll... <laughs> I'll have the Swiss roll. Mustn't be greedy. Oh, really, Newt. You know, I'd forgotten all about him. Where is he, by the way? Oh, don't ask me, Henry. He's been behaving so oddly lately. Oh, what's the trouble? Well, I might as well not have a domestic chaplain. He's never here when I want him. Comes in at all hours saying he's been to the library. His light's on half the night and I can't get him up in the mornings. Probably going through a difficult patch. Oh, not again, surely. <laughs> we had all that last Christmas. Oh, did we? Yes, don't you remember when Canon Haywood's daughter came home in that see-through dress? Oh. <laughs> well, he's young, you know. Newt, young? Is he? Well, isn't he? I've never really thought about it. Mm -hmm. uh, does he have a cold bath in the mornings? Uh, not that I know of. No, they're very, very bracing. So I'm told. Hmm. Ah, that, that'll be the evening paper. Shan't be a moment, Henry. Evening paper, your lordship. Ah, thank you, my boy. So long. Uh, uh, one moment. There are six copies here. That's right. Special order. So long. Uh, now, who could have ordered six papers? <laughs> ah, have my papers come, my lord? Your papers? My dear Newt, what on earth do you want six papers for? Oh, my mother, my lord. Your mother? Yes, you see, I think I've discovered something. What? You've discovered your mother likes the evening paper? <laughs> oh, no, my lord, no. It's a significant contribution to historical research. At least I, I think it is. Oh, yes, well, I think perhaps you'd better come into the study, sit down quietly and have a nice cup of tea with us. But I've written an article about it in tonight's paper. Henry, what are you doing? Bishop. Uh, you've been quick. I was just having another piece of Swiss roll. <laughs> Good afternoon, Archdeacon. Oh, hello, old chap. How do you feel? Newt tells me he's made a discovery, Henry. Well, it was bound to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's rather exciting, Archdeacon. Yes, nevertheless, if you take my tip, you'll try a cold bath. <laughs> He's written an article about it in tonight's paper. Newt, will you kindly read it to us? Oh, righty here, my lord. I'm not sure which page it's on. Oh, well, come along, Henry. We'll all have a look. Right, Bishop. Found it. Good. Let's hear it. Bishop's secret exposed. What? <laughs> Mr. Herbert Bishop told today of his secret marriage to a 15-year-old schoolgirl. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Bishop. Mm. Oh, here it is, my lord. Good. Well, let's hear it. Come on. Oh. I must say I like my chaplain to show initiative. Important discovery, ancient tradition, unearthed by the Reverend Mervyn Newt, chaplain to the Bishop of St. Ark's. Oh, I like the sound of that. Ah. Don't you, Henry? Oh, most scholarly, Bishop. Have you ever noticed, over the west door of the cathedral, the figure of a man with a satchel? Well, spurred on by curiosity, I determined to discover why he was there. Early and exhaustive searches in the cathedral library revealed nothing. The figure refused to yield his secret. Finally, after weeks among the cathedral archives, I chanced upon a paper which I do not believe has seen the light of day since the 14th century. It was, of course, written in Middle Anglo-Saxon. Luckily for me, this presented no difficulty. And <laughs> there I found the fascinating story of the peddler of St. Ogg's. It appears that one evening Bishop Ogg was coming home after a hard day's work when he saw a poor peddler sitting by the road. What is the matter, my good man? quoth the bishop. Alas, I had nowhere to sleep, was the reply. Come with me, said the bishop. And so saying, he took the poor peddler home and gave him a meal at his own table and put him to sleep in his own bed. Now it happened that night that there was a dreadful fire in the bishop's chamber and the poor peddler was completely burnt. 
But as the bishop was sleeping in another room, he escaped unharmed and in thanksgiving decreed that if ever a poor peddler should have no out sleep, he need only apply to the bishop to be treated with the same hospitality that the blessed Bishop Og showed to his poor peddler. <laughs> this edict remains on the statue of our cathedral even today and is known as... Peddler's Right. What's that, Henry? Peddler's Right. It's known as Peddler's Right. Oh, you know, Archdeacon. Of course. But, but how? It's in the guidebook. <laughs> Oh, well, I never thought of looking there. Huh? <laughs> you mean you've directed all this effort to unearthing a story that was in the guidebook all the time? But didn't you know it, Bishop? Oh, my dear Henry, I've never managed to wade through that guidebook. Anyway, Newt, it was hardly worth writing to the paper about. Well, I thought it was such a charitable act. What? Letting the poor man roast? <laughs> no, my lord, no, no, no. Giving up his bed and letting him eat at his own table. Oh, that. Yes, I thought it was an example from which the present generation might profit. Oh, really, Newt? Did you seriously imagine anyone would profit from a story like that? But, my lord, I thought it was... Uh, oh. oh, see who is that at the front door, will you, Newt? Ah, yes, my lord. Yes, yes. I wrote an article once for the Times. Did you, Henry? Yes. It was in 1926. Oh, about the general strike, I suppose. No, about how to make toffee. Uh, oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, can I help you? Yes, I rather think you can. Oh, well, won't you come in? Well, thank you. Ah, yes. I was hoping I could see the bishop. Well, have you an appointment, Mr... Uh... Bird, Stanley Bird. Now, yes. I'm afraid I haven't. Ah. You see, this has all come up a bit sudden. Oh, well, his lordship is rather occupied at the moment. Can you tell me the nature of your business? It's personal. A question of uh, accommodation. Oh, I see, yes. Well, if you care to wait, I'll just go and see if his lordship can see you. Why, well, thank you very much. Yes. Would you like to see the evening paper while you wait? Thanks, but I've read it. Oh, well, do put your case down. Thank you. Yes. Oh, I say, that looks awfully heavy. I'll say it is. My wares, you know. Wares? Yes, I'm a rep. You know, commercial traveller. Oh, I see, yes. Yes, what used to be known in the olden days as a peddler. Know <laughs> what I mean? Yes, what? What? Oh, Moses. <laughs> saying, Newt, is that you should have thought of this possibility before you wrote the well, article. I'm sorry, my lord, but it honestly never crossed my mind this would happen. I've telephoned the dean and asked him to examine the statute and find a loophole. I'm expecting him to telephone back at any moment. Right. Ah, ah, that'll be him now. Uh, the Palace of the Dogs? Pew Critchley here, my lord. Oh, dean, thank you. H have you found an answer? Certainly I have. Splendid. What am I to do? Hand over your bed immediately. Uh, <laughs> what? Treat him as an honoured guest and spare no expense. He is to sleep in your bed and eat at your table for as long as he chooses. But what about the loophole? There are no loopholes in the statutes of this cathedral, my lord. Oh, well, thank you very much, Dean. Not at all, my lord. Glad to have been of help. Oh. What did he say, my lord? He said, Newt, that you've been very stupid and put me in an intolerable position. Oh, I'm very sorry, my lord. It's no good being sorry. He's here. Oh, well, then I suppose we've got to make the best of it. Well, actually, it's really rather romantic, you know. I mean, coming here like this after seven centuries. Mm, it's a pity you couldn't have chosen one of the other six. <laughs> it's ridiculous nonsense about my bed. I mean, it's so unnecessary. But it's on the statute, my lord. If anybody mentions that word again... I'm, I'm sorry, my lord, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, the most comfortable bed I've ever slept in. Oh, get me a glass of sherry, Yes, of course, my lord, yes. Henry, at last... How did you get on with the shopping? Oh, everywhere was shut, except the Indian shop in Bridge Street. You got the bread, potatoes and cheese? Oh, not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? Well, I got a packet of rice, a tin of curry powder and half a pound of desiccated coconut. <laughs> well, we shall just have to curry the chicken and hope it goes round. Where is the intruder? Upstairs. Has he told any more of those jokes about clergymen? <laughs> oh, wasn't that embarrassing, that... Grateful story. Yes, and he got the end wrong. <laughs> Still, I expect we'll get used to him after he's been here a while. Henry, how long do you think he's likely to stay? Oh, he'll, he'll soon move on. Do you think so? Oh, you're certain, Bishop. These chaps never stay anywhere long. There 
you all are. Do I intrude? Oh, no, not at all, Mr. Baird. Won't you come in? Thank you, thank you. Hey, it's nice in here. Somebody's got good taste. Uh, Newt, a chair for Mr. Byrne. Yes, oh, sir. thank you. Yes. Well, I hope you found everything satisfactory in my, uh, <laughs> I mean, in your room. Oh, yes, fine, thanks. And plain, but very comfortable. It's unostentatious. Yes, well, I'm sorry things are a little makeshift tonight. Our daily woman will be here tomorrow. Case of Cherche La Fab, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, what time do you gentlemen have supper? We dine at eight. Well, we've just got time to slip down to the hostelry and partake of a glass of conviviality. Any of you gentlemen care to join me in oh. the goat and campuses? Ah, uh, no, thank you, Mr. Bard. I might get in the way. Yeah, perhaps you might. Well, um, <laughs> I'll be off then. I'll see you later. Uh, yeah, yeah, look, before you go, may we ascertain whether you have any preference about food or can you eat anything? Oh, I'm a very easy man to please, though. I can eat anything, anything you like. Good. Well, tonight we're having curry... Except chicken. Uh, oh. I can't be in the same room as a chicken. I'm, I'm what you call allergic to birds. How extraordinary. Do you know, I have an auntie who was allergic to shellfish. One shrimp and she came out in a hot flush. <laughs> it is the same with me and our feathered friends. I've only got to look at an egg or a feather and it brings me out something horrible all over yes, the... Yes, uh... yes, 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 yes. Well, we, <laughs> we all have our little problems. Well, that's me. Mm -hmm. The bird who doesn't like birds. <laughs> Mind you, I get on all right with the other sort. You know what I mean? Oh, you mean wild birds? Not oh, oh. The wilder, the better. Well, tatty by for now. Wait, 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 wait one moment. Uh, Mr. Bird, please. Tell me, are you likely to be staying long? Oh, no, no. It's a new territory, and I'm only having a look around for a few days. Oh, ju ju just a few days, then? Eh? Oh, that's right. Mm. Uh, two or three, perhaps? Oh, certainly no longer. Ah. Uh, this time. Uh, this time? I'll be back in a fortnight, of course, for three months. Well, I'll see you at Den's. Ooh. Even the Castle Hotel in Market Street is full, and that's gone right down. And the price. Well, I've been lucky, got in at the homely. I'm always all right there. Uh, that's a bit far out for me. I had trouble fixing up, Mr. Tim. You must be joking, Doris. Oh, it's Wilkins, the glue people. Is Their that... convention. Is that so, Mrs. Pitt? Yes, yes, it's every year. The uh, place is as bad as Brighton. Oh, look, there's old... Um, oh, uh, yes, name, the, the chapel was in here earlier. Uh, Stanley Tim. Bird. Hello, uh, all. Get fixed up, did you? Uh, I could put in a word for you at the homely, if you like. Uh, who thinks I'm all right, I'm in. Oh, where? Not, you haven't got in at the castle. No, no, the palace. Where's that? You don't mean you... You didn't you get... You went there and asked. Why not? It said in the paper. Did you hear that, Mrs Pitt? Really, I never thought you'd go. Oh, no, did I? What oh. did they say? Oh, they were very nice, really. Oh. How long are you there for? Uh, just the night, is it? As well, long as I want. Will I'm blow? They tell me to make myself at home. Here, yeah, what'll you have? No, 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 thanks. This is on me. I can't stay long. They're getting my dinner. You mean you're getting full board? My own room, grab everything, all for free. Oh, oh, come on, all now, drink up. I've got three days exit, so it's it shorts all round. Let's oh, celebrate. Oh, now, what do you have? Uh, it's, uh, um, pit, pit. Oh, I'm running. Oh, Three, four, five. That's enough curry powder, Bishop. Right. Now, we put this on the stove and we stir it, do we, Henry? That's what it says here, on a low light. And that is a Madras curry. Yes. One more tablespoonful and it becomes a bindaloo. Oh, right. <laughs> Pity you couldn't eat the chicken. Still, it's lucky you found that tin of corned beef. Yes, I've had it by me since the war. <laughs> Really? Yes, since 1918. <laughs> 1918? Over 50 years? Well, in that case, six, seven, eight. Uh, Bishop, Bishop, uh, what are you doing with the curry powder? I'm making it a bindaloo, Henry. <laughs> Tell you jokes all night. I don't doubt it. Mind you, I'm, I'm picking them in. Now. Nothing crude. Oh, I wouldn't. Ooh, will you have some coffee? Why not? You only live once. <laughs> don't you agree, Bishop? Well, not entirely. <laughs> <laughs> Where has Newt got to? He's upstairs. 
I don't think he's feeling very well. <clears throat> Funny that, I'm fond of curry myself. Did you hear the one about the clergyman who met an Indian fakir in the middle of the Gobar Desert? Uh, no, 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 I must go, I must go, I must go. Oh, good night, Bishop, good night. Henry, uh, you are not deserting me. Uh, aren't I, Bishop? No. <laughs> no, don't go yet, we're only just beginning to enjoy ourselves. Ah, there you are, Newt. How, how are you feeling, old chap? Well, a little better, thank you, Archdeacon. I think it was the curry. Oh, Bindaloo. Yes, several times, Archdeacon. <laughs> Never mind about that loot. Have some coffee. Uh, no, no, thank you, my lord. No. That reminds me. Did you hear about the lady organist who invited the curate for coffee? Uh, uh, shall we <laughs> put on the television? Oh, yes, my lord. Uh, do you mind, Mr. Barr? No, no, if you want it, have it. I don't want to be in any way a burden. Do you watch much television? Not much, no. I find it interferes with conversation. Here, did you hear the one about the curate and the lady contortionist? Oh, all your stories about clergymen, Mr. Barr. I, I have just no. switch the machine on. I, I only tell them to you, gentlemen, because I know they'll appeal. That's what you have to do in my line, you see, study the customers. Ah, uh, uh, wait a minute. Here it comes. <laughs> Tonight's speaker is the Reverend Reginald Eustace Jones, vicar of St. Bright's, Padgley. Oh, gracious. I was up at Selwyn with his father. Good evening. I wonder if you've ever heard the story about the traveling salesman. <laughs> One day he knocked at the door of a lovely old... Mr. Bird, why have you turned it off? Well, load of rubbish. Why do people always pick on traveling salesmen to tell jokes about? We're just ordinary people doing an ordinary job. In which case, I think it is time for bed. Bed? Did you say bed? Yes. For those who have them to go to. Well, a bit early, isn't it? Well, I mean, for us, no. But, oh, oh, well. Oh, dear, it's a bit embarrassing, really. You see, um, I've asked some friends round. <laughs> You've done what? Well, you said I was to make myself at home, and we've been celebrating, you see. Oh, they're all right, nice, affable people. I mean, you needn't worry, they're very clean. But, but, but couldn't they have come earlier? Earlier? How could they? It's only just closing time. <laughs> but you don't intend to entertain them here. Well, of course not. I wouldn't dream of taking such a liberty. I shall take them up to my room. Oh, that'll be the lads now. Now, don't shift. Uh, I'll, I'll let them in. Oh, hello. Oh, you found it then. Oh, no trouble at all. Oh, come along in. Oh, this is a bit of a all right. Isn't it nice? A bit tasteful. Come in, Mrs. Pitt. Oh, you've done yourself all right then. But what's happening, Newt? We've got dozens of people here, my lord. Oh, gracious, there's a man with a record player. I'm not standing for this. Bishop, uh, you're, you're, you're not calling the police? No, the dean. Bill Critchley speaking. Dean, dean, something must be done. Who is that? Me, dean, the bishop. No, uh, is it important? I'm just going to bed. Well, of course it's important. This bird... What bird? This man... I thought you said this bird. I did. <laughs> this man bird. My lord, have you been drinking? <laughs> of course I haven't been drinking. I'm talking about this man, this peddler. I give his hand with this. <laughs> Mostly, my lord. What's the matter? Well, there are two men for the crate of bottled beer. Really? Oh, well, let me see. No. <laughs> no, Henry, I forbid you to go out there. My lord, my lord. What about the peddler? Oh, oh, so, so very sorry, Dean. Well, it's all quite impossible. He's invited a whole lot of people round here. What's wrong with that? Wrong? I can't have my palace turned into a nightclub. You've no alternative. I, yes, I have. I intend to throw them all out of my house. Oh, but you can't. You can't take the law into your own hands. It's expressly against the statute. You'll find yourself before the Court of Arches. But, Dean, surely there's something I can do. I mean, there must be. There is. I knew it. What is it? Tell me quickly. Change the statute by Act of Parliament. Good night. No. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, yes, Mr. Bird. What do you want now? Nothing, sir. I just wanted to say sleep well. <laughs> What are you doing here at this time? Causing sleep. Oh, it's probably the curry. I didn't think it was quite 
You know, sort of growling. No, 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 it's, it's the noise. Really? Can you hear it? Uh, everyone can hear it. There are lights on everywhere. The whole close is awake. Oh, Grace, uh, well, would you better go and tell the bishop? He's in the study. I just made this cocoa for him. Ah, hello, Henry. Bishop, do you know what the time is? Twenty past three. Pardon, Lord? Oh, thank you, Newt. Coco is just what I need. <laughs> but can't you do something? Well, what do you suggest? Well, can't you go up there? I went. Oh, what happened? They gave me a glass of rum and peppermint. <laughs> Didn't you remonstrate with them? Yes, and they promised to be as quiet as possible. Mm. Listen. Oh, no, it's no good, Henry. I'm beaten. One moment, Bishop. Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 12. What do you mean? Leave it to me, Bishop. What's the Archdeacon going to do, my lord? As far as I can make out, he's going to read Isaiah to him. <laughs> well, at least he's arrived safely. Who can that be? My lord, I have been awakened. Well, you're very lucky I haven't been to sleep. Are you not aware, my lord, that riotous behaviour after curfew is in direct contravention of the statute? Well, of course I'm aware of it, Dean, but you know who is responsible. Indeed I do. You are. Uh, me? How dare you suggest such a thing? It's that man, Bird, and his friends. They may be making the noise, my lord, but you are responsible. As the householder, it is up to you to see that your house is properly conducted. It is clearly laid down in the statute. How dare you come here, Dean? Hey, my but lord, listen. I refuse to listen to any more. No, listen to the party, my lord. They are dancing the conga. Oh, oh it doesn't seem sound as though poor old Henry's had much effect. <laughs> But they're, they're coming downstairs. Oh. oh, look, the Archdeacon, he's leading the crocodile. He's leading them, my lord. Archdeacon, what is the meaning of this? I, Zardine, go out in peace and be led forth with joy. Oh, Archdeacon, how clever of you. Uh, thank you, Knut. Open the front door, will you? Allow me, Henry. Uh, come on, everyone. I came, my sword. I come <laughs> Ah, good morning, Newt. Uh, good morning, my lord. <laughs> What's the matter? Well, I, I think I've got a cold coming on. Has Mr. Bird come down uh, yet? No, my lord, no, there's no sign of him. Ah, that'll be Henry. Morning, Bishop. Ah, dear old Henry, come on in. What's it feel like to be a hero? Oh, you are clever, Archdeacon. Where did you end up? Yes, did he go off all right? Oh, it would have done, Bishop. If the dean hadn't left his front door open. <laughs> <laughs> What's the news? None, Henry, none. Mr. Bird's not up yet. Really, the thought of interminable days and nights of this is more than I can bear. Good morning. Uh, oh, ah, Mr. Bird. Good morning. Did you sleep well? No, I did not. I've got a bone to pick with you. I beg your pardon. That bed, it's got bugs in it. Uh, it's got what? You heard me, bud. I can assure you it has nothing of the sort. You see for yourself, I'll unbutton my shirt. Look, look, I'm eat alive. I do not wish to see, and I can assure you that my bed... Quiet, Miss Quap. What are you going to do about it, Mr. Bird? Me? I'm leaving. You, you are? are? Well, I knew there'd be a catch in it when I saw the paper. I expected it would be a bit boring, but I thought at least you'd be clean. Really? I must... Disgusting, I call it. Good morning. I have a good mind to report you to the town hall. Good morning. Cleanliness is next to godliness, you know. You want to remember that? Good morning. Oh, really? This is too much. But he has gone, my lord. To suggest there are bugs in my bed. Really, it's the cleanest and most comfortable bed. Why is it so comfortable, Bishop? What do you mean? Uh, well, what makes it so comfortable? Well, it's a good bed. But what sort of a bed? Well, a feather bed, actually. But they're no more prone to bugs than any other. Uh, exactly. Feathers. Oh, uh, feathers, of course, yes. He's allergic to birds, remember? Uh, show me an egg or a feather and he brings me out something horrid. <laughs> <laughs> of course. How splendid. Well, well, well. What a happy issue out of our afflictions. So much for peddlers' rights, oh, yeah, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and note... 
Yes. No more articles. Oh, no, my lord, no, my lord, no. Come on, Henry, I think this calls for a celebration. A sherry, Bishop. <laughs> well, it's a little bit early, but why not? Let's go into the study. <laughs> oh, well, answer the door, will you, Newt? Well, well, do you think I should, my lord? Why ever not? <coughs> well, Mr. Bard might have changed his mind. Oh, good gracious, yes, I hadn't thought of that. Better have a peep through the window. Uh, right here, my lord. Uh, uh, who is it? All clear, my lord. It's only an Indian gentleman. <laughs> an Indian? Yes, he's got a turban, and he has a roll of something under his arm. Oh, well, you better see what he wants. Righty ho, my lord. Yes. Ah, good morning. Can I help you? Yeah, if you please, Reverend Young, sir. I, I was reading in the paper of the most hospitable Bishop of St. Hogs. Uh, now, I am a poor peddler, and it is occurring to me. In that episode of All Gas and Gators, the parts were played as follows. The Archdeacon, Robertson Hare, the Bishop, William Mervyn, the Bishop's Chaplain, the Reverend Newt, Derek Nimmo, the Dean, John Barron, Stanley Bird, Peter Jones. Other parts were played by Margot Boyd, Joe Manning Wilson, Sean Barrett and Ronald Forpart. The Bishop Meets a Bird was written for television and adapted for radio by Pauline Devaney and Edwin Apps. The programme was produced by David Hatch. I might as well not have a domestic chaplain. He's never here when I want him. Comes in at all hours saying he's been to the library. His light's on half the night and I can't get him up in the mornings. Mm, probably going through a difficult patch. Oh, not again, surely. <laughs> we had all that last Christmas. Oh, did we? Yes, don't you remember when Canon Haywood's daughter came home in that see-through dress? Oh. <laughs> well, he's young, you know. Newt, young? Is he? Well, isn't he? I've never really thought about it. Mm -hmm. uh, does he have a cold bath in the mornings? Uh, not that I know of. Uh, they're very, very bracing. So I'm told. Mm. Ah, that, that'll be the evening paper. Shan't be a moment, Henry, and have a nice cup of tea with us. But I've written an article about it in tonight's paper. Henry, what are you doing? Bishop, uh, you've been quick. I was just having another piece of Swiss roll. <laughs> Good afternoon, Archdeacon. Oh, hello, old chap. How do you feel? Newt tells me he's made a discovery, Henry. Well, it was bound to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's rather exciting, Archdeacon. Yes, nevertheless, if you take my tip, you'll try a cold bath. <laughs> <laughs> he's written an article about it in tonight's paper. Newt, will you kindly read it to us? Oh, righty here, my lord. I'm not sure which page it's on. Oh, well, come along, Henry. We'll all have a look. Right, Bishop. Evening paper, your lordship. Ah, thank you, my boy. So long. Uh, uh, one moment. There are six copies here. That's right. Special order. So long. Uh, now, who could have ordered six papers? <laughs> ah, have my papers come, my lord? Your papers? My dear Newt, what on earth do you want six papers for? Oh, my mother, my lord. Your mother? Yes, you see, I think I've discovered something. What? You've discovered your mother likes the evening paper? I oh, never no, no, no. It's a significant contribution to historical research. At least I, I think it is. Oh, yes, well, I think perhaps you'd better come into the study, sit down quietly. And... Ah, another cup of tea, Henry. Oh, thank you, Bishop. Oh, this is very pleasant. It certainly is. Yep. What do you have now? Is that a Swiss roll? Yes, cream and chopped walnut. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> Won't you have another piece of bread and butter first? It'll only go stale. Oh, all right, if you say so. Waste not, want not. Here you are, Henry. Oh, thank you, Bishop. Uh, on second thoughts... What's the matter? Uh, well, Newt. I've remembered Newt. We'll leave the bread and butter for him. I'll... <laughs> I'll have the Swiss roll. I shall be greedy. Oh, really, Newt. You know, I'd forgotten all about him. Where is he, by the way? Oh, don't ask me, Henry. He's been behaving so oddly lately. Oh, what's the trouble? Well...
In the study of the Bishop's Palace at St. Ogg's, in two armchairs before a roaring fire, sit the Bishop and his Archdeacon. They're enjoying their tea, particularly the Archdeacon.